Okay, so by the end of phase two, you know, he's going when he needs to go. And now we need to systematically, carefully fade out the reinforcers. Now you can do that. So one way to do that, the easiest way to do that is switch from whatever it is that you're offering, let's say you're offering chocolate chips, to some kind of sticker system or token system, right? So now, instead of chocolate chips every time you pee in the toilet, right? right the first time you pee in the toilet, you get a Nemo sticker or whatever, SpongeBob, Disney princesses, I don't care. Right? And the second time, you get another one, and when the, when the squares are all filled up, so now every two times, you get chocolate chips. Every time you get Nemo, every two times, you get chocolate chips. And we do that for a couple of days until we're kind of stable. And now, every three times, you get chocolate chips. So you're gradually extending the number of peas in the toilet that are necessary Right? And eventually, it's if you dry all day, you get at the end. Right? And at some point, it's you know, every other day, every third day, I mean, at some point, you can tell that it's not really necessary anymore. And you can just, but you've got to fade the reinforcers. You can't just drop them like a hot potato, like, OK, we're done, no more. Kids like, really? Seriously? Are you kidding? Like, and you'll get the wet pants again. Right? So you got to slowly, and if, you know, again, there's lots of ways of doing this. Stickers, stamps, on the hand, on the shirt, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, if it's not chocolate chips, if it's iPad, then the picture here is iPad. You know, one, two, and then you get the iPad. One, two, three, then you get the iPad. My rule of thumb is usually, you know, two or three days on, at each level, and then you add one more or two more. So many of you are used to using like token economies or sticker systems or whatever for kids. So this should be pretty familiar. But this is a way of fading, right? Now, for some kids, the stickers themselves are so reinforcing, you could also use them as reinforcers, yeah. right? I mean, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Have a big chart in the bathroom, right? And every time he gets his tangible reinforcer, his food or his iPad or whatever, you also, you know, put a sticker up on the chart, and when the chart's all full, we call grandma, and we tell grandma, and isn't this fabulous, and right? I mean, again, you know what will work there. So you can use stickers as part of the ongoing reinforcement or as a way to fade. Yeah, I mean, if the, if the kid is saying to you, like, uh, you know, you give him the Nemo sticker, and he's like, uh, where's the chocolate, right? You know, don't get, don't, don't lose the gains you've made for the sake of well, we're fading now. Yes. You know, give him the, you know, give him the chocolate. I mean, like, don't, don't. What would, what's the phrase? Don't spite your eyes. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. Don't cut off your nose to spite your face. Right there. <laughs> Right. The other thing you can do when you're fading, um, and again, you're going to be really, really slow about this, is you know, this is the point where you can start building in, especially for younger kids, well, um, how you say it would be different, is sort of um, big boy, big girl rewards. Right? So if you go a whole week, you go a whole day without wetting yourself and you only pee in the toilet, now you get to wear your Disney princess underwear to school the next day. Or you go two days and we go to the store and we buy you, you know, Thomas the Tank Engine underwear or, you know, SpongeBob sheets if you're doing nighttime training. I mean, again, these are kind of more expensive, bigger, bigger ticket items. But as you're fading, this is like the message is, wow, you're such a big girl. You can wear spec. That's the other thing is I wouldn't buy special underwear, cute, beautiful, special underwear, unless unless I really needed to during the training. Like, let her wear white, pink. Ordinary, so that you can save the Disney princess underwear for this point, right? Now, if there's a lot of resistance to taking the pull-ups off or the diaper, and the only way to get her off is to put her in Disney princess underwear from the outset, fine, do it, right? But if you can save it, you want to save it for the, toward the end where, you know, like, wow, you're a, you're a big boy, you're a big girl, that kind of thing. 
You can, and of course, you can buy any cartoon character underwear on the planet now, including action figures, you know. So my point again is don't just drop the reinforcement because that's what got you here. You worked hard to find reinforcers in the beginning. You've used them judiciously. You've planned them. Don't just drop them when you think the toilet training's done. Just kind of ooze your way out of them so that you don't lose the skill, right? You don't lose it. And all the time, all the time, the verbal message is, wow, I'm so proud of you. You're, 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 you're a you're a big boy, you're a big girl, or, or this, is the, this is the way teenagers behave. This is good teenager behavior. This is, you know, you, you can, now here's all the things you can do because you're trained. Wow, we can go swimming now because, right, like you wanna, the messaging around this is, wow, this is a terrific thing. You worked hard, I worked hard. The world is now open to you in some different kinds of ways, okay? Okay, you've been asking questions, which is fine. Um, anything else about phase two, phase one or phase two? We're gonna move to poo now, so last time to do P. Don't ask. And so when do we start to ask? Well, you, you, you shouldn't have to ask. You shouldn't have to ask. He either goes on his own, right? Nobody ever asked me if I have to go to the bathroom. Right? Anybody ever ask you? No. no. So don't ask. You either take them because it's time or you see the swiggle, right? Or he goes on his own, right? But the, the ask is ask. I mean, we, we ask typically developing kids, usually before we leave for the mall, right? Do you have to go to the bathroom? Right? What we really mean is, I'd really like you to go to the bathroom now, because we're going to the mall and I don't want you to have an accident there. But that's not what we say to them. We say, do you have to go to the bathroom? Right? Now, sometimes they say yes and they go. A lot of times they say no and we, do, we all do what you do, which is go anyway. But then if, if it's go anyway, why did you ask him in the first place? Right? I mean, do you have to go to the bathroom? Sounds like I have a choice. If I don't actually have a choice, don't even ask me. No, seriously. I mean, we do this all the time in every other way, too. You know, are you ready to take your medication now, honey? No. Too bad. Take it anyway. Why did you ask? <laughs> you know, and then, and, then, and then we wonder why our kids are confused, right? We're constantly asking them rhetorical questions that we don't, we don't really mean. So just stop doing that. I'm so glad you asked that. You're sorry you asked, I know. <laughs> no, I'm so glad you asked that because it's a really important question, right? Like, and it's bigger than just toilet training. We're constantly asking kids if they want to do something when they don't really have a choice. And then we complain because, well, he doesn't know how to make choices. Well, how could he know how to make choices? <laughs> you know, right? A choice is a choice. A choice means there really are two options and I don't care which one you choose, right? You had a choice of what food you wanted to eat today at break. Nobody said, you have to have this one, right? Stop asking rhetorical questions when you don't really mean that they have a choice. A little tangent for you. What else do you want to know? Yes, anything else about peeing? Are we okay about peeing? Can you do this? I mean, seriously, think it through. You could, could, could you imagine doing this, kind of, sort of? So the question is how, so if, if, if an SEA needs a coffee break at the time when the kid needs to go to the bathroom, how do you work around that? I don't know, but you need to figure it out. Maybe another SEA takes him during that time. You better figure it out. I mean, you better trade it off. You know, I'll tell you, you're training, I'm training, I'll take your break, you take my break. You know, whatever, whatever. I mean, there's got to be, it's okay to have more than one person training as long as somebody's in, somebody has to be in charge of the program. Somebody, the buck has to stop with someone. 
Because otherwise what you have is three people training and everybody has their own kind of version of how this should go. Well, I don't believe in this part. Well, I, don't, I think we should lecture him when he's wet. Well, I don't believe in using tangible reinforcement. Everybody's doing it slightly different, right? No, you can't, no. Right? Everybody needs to be pointed in the same direction. So if there's more than one person involved, somebody needs to be the point person who gets everybody together at the end of every week and says, OK, let's look at our data. Here's the graph. Wets are going up. Dries are going down. We've got a problem here. Right? Somebody's got to be the driver. And sometimes it's mom and dad, and sometimes it's the teacher, and sometimes it's the resource person. Sometimes it's the OT or the SLP or an SEA or a behavior consultant. I don't care who drives it, but somebody's got to be in the driver's seat. Otherwise, you've got a car that's just like Wah! running amok, and you're going to have a mess. You're going to have a mess. And let me tell you, honestly, from the kid's perspective, and I'm not saying this to make any of you feel bad. Please don't hear it that way. But from the kid's perspective, every time you try to train and it's not done properly, and he, he gets more confused. He gets more confused. What the hell do you want me to do here? Right? What the heck am I supposed to be doing? So I appreciate that many of you have tried three, four, five, ten, a dozen times to do it. And I don't want to make you feel bad for your failures, because your heart's in it. You know how important it is. But at some point, somebody who really knows how to do this has to be in charge. And everybody has to agree to listen to that person. Otherwise, you're going to end up with failure, failure, failure. It's terrible for you it's as an SEA, as a parent, as a teacher. And it's awful for the kid. Because he just gets more and more and more and more confused, right? So if you're not con, if you don't have the authority to be in charge of this because of your position, I'm just a parent. I don't believe that, but right, some right, or I'm just an SEA, right? And you don't have the authority to be in the driver's seat. Find somebody who it does have that authority, and everybody needs to agree to let that person be drive the ship. Right? Because otherwise it's just, I hate, I hate to see you guys wasting your time running around like chickens with your heads cut off trying to do something that is doable, but it, you're not working together, so it's not doable. Right? Does, does, does that make sense? I'm sure you've all been there in various ways, right? So, uh, yeah, I'm saying this for your sake as much as for the sake of the person who you want to train. Do I see hands back there? I'm looking at the dark people in the, yes. Well, two's a little young for a typically developing kid, right? I mean, two's kind of at the margin. I think you can trip train it too, maybe. I don't know. I, 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 it's very hard to know, because all I know now is the kid's age. So I don't know what the disability is and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, I, I don't know. But it's, a, it's, a, it's on the edge. It's on the edge. I mean, she can walk and she, like, does like items. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, I think you could probably trip train, right? You could probably trip train. I'm not sure about self-initiation quite yet. But, you know, I, again, Girls are easier than boys. Boys are harder to train for whatever reason. I don't know. Um, so, you know, but if it's a parent priority and everybody's willing and keen, you could try a trip training round. You know, before two, I think, is a bit much. That's, and like I said, that's kind of on the edge. What do you, is that? Yeah. yeah. Two's kind of young. Especially if there's some disability involved, right? Which might make instruction a little bit more difficult, but you could give it a shot. Oh. So would you want instructional control over the child? Sure. Well, you're not gonna have instructional control over a two-year-old probably. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you, you know, if it becomes, a, it, you've gotta have a kid who's willing to sit on the toilet, you've gotta be able, you've gotta do all the stuff, right? If people can manage that, she doesn't have to be able to follow commands and do this when you tell her to do this or any of that, you're not requiring that. 
but you got to have the insert and the seat and the stool and the, you know, right? All of that. So he thinks, right? What does he think? I'm only supposed to pee at home, right? I'm only supposed to pee at home. Yep, I would trip train him at school. Okay. Well, I mean, he's obviously got terrific bladder control. <laughs> I mean, you know, his interval is six hours, right? <laughs> but I mean, you don't you don't want that, right? You want him to you want him. If do they ever take him at school? No, they don't even bother because he. Yeah. Like, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, they, again, you know, the, they could probably. They don't have to do math. Math isn't going to do them any good. You know what the interval is. It's at least six hours. But, you know, if they, if they took him first thing in the morning, if they took him um, at recess, if they took him at lunch, if they took him once in the afternoon, I mean, ordinarily you wouldn't do it that way. But, you know, and then again, big reinforcer if he does pee and yada, yada, yada. I mean, you want him to get the message that it's okay. We're happy. We're thrilled. Mommy's thrilled. Everybody's thrilled if you pee at school. Oh, okay. Isn't that funny? Well, but but at public places, you've taught him that, right? You've reinforced him at public places. Yeah. 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 So he needs opportunities to be reinforced for peeing in the toilet at school. And of course, if he never asks to go, and they never take him, he never has the re the opportunity to be reinforced, right? So it should be fairly easy to solve.